it's thunder. It, it, and it should sound like thunder. And if you actually learn it, you know, and when I read it, it's the fall. And that's, but, but you can't, you can't just read it up there off the page. What? <laughs> I feel like I've been like wanting to ask you this since I first saw the video. Like, sure, sure. Wh why? <laughs> because like, to me, I'm like, like, I, I know the whole, like, I've seen your sort of like, I remember the first time that I saw you talk, it was just sort of like, you know, like you have the time and you have the desire. Why? But like, mm -hmm. I, I don't like, what is the, what is the reason that made you sort of go from like, oh, this is a thing that I could do to like, no, I'm dedicating the time and um, it, took, it took a long time because the, okay. because the insight really, I was, um, uh, I was, I was 24 or 25 when I first picked up Finnegan's Wake. Okay. And, uh, and my, and when I first, when I read the first page and I got to the hundred letter word <laughs> in the middle of the page, it was. You know, the thought came to me. I was uh, I was a graduate student in music theory at the, wow. at the time. Okay. And, and 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 I'm a pianist. You know, so I was you know, and I, I've been a musician my whole life. So so I get to this hundred letter word, and it's wait. You can't just read this off the page. I mean, this is not. It's it's <laughs> like you don't know what to do with it, and you hear people who just get there and they just close the book and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> but what what I but what I can see is well that's this will take practice this will take rehearsal this this is I have to learn it I mean and it's the same thing as taking a, a new piano piece that I'm working on I'm we're, we're say I mean you're working on a Beethoven sonata or something which um, and if you're taking lessons then your teacher is going to give you something that's going to be challenging because you don't get better if you're just playing true, stuff true. that you can just read off the page and then close the book. So, so if I'm practicing a new piano piece, which is which I was doing a lot in those days, you start slow, you take it a measure at a time, you do it hands separately, uh, you learn a little bit and work that up, and then you move on to the next bit and work that up. And that was you know in a microcosm i could see that that was what the the hundred letter words are like that you know there are these tiny pieces pieces of music that you have to that you have to approach as a as a practicing musician in order to make it work and so the the second reason that but it's a but it's a obviously it's a very daunting prospect <laughs> to think about learning the whole book and I was kind of sort of at first um, in 1984, it was like, you know, I learned that hundred letter word, but it was like, if you give a mouse a cookie, you know, <laughs> oh, to, to speak of a, another classic, uh, it says, well, maybe I'll just learn, learn this whole paragraph. This, I'll learn the whole page. And then I thought, well, I learned the page, you know, and then I, I moved on from there and uh, and so in in the eighties, I did learn chapter one, and wow. got to got to the place. Um, I think I think it was beginning in eighty eight. We would just invite friends over, and I would do, and I would do chapter one, and I would <laughs> get you know, and we would, and we would and we would have food, and we had. Uh, big black upright piano in the middle of the apartment and we would kind of drape it in a purple bed sheet so it looked like a coffin and had candles on it um That's you know i actually actually said set my shirt on fire once because i got too close to a candle i had to stop and blow it out um and and it got to be and i actually started working on chapter two around that time and it was partly just that it felt really that it felt like this is too big uh it was also partly because i more than partly i think because we had our first child in uh 1990 and so that kind of put 
a lot of things on a back burner. Um, and, but then uh, Finnegan's Wake came up again, mainly in the, in the context, this is big fast forward because it, <laughs> it was like, it was uh, 2000, 2011 and 2012, okay. I arranged a lot of performances for uh, John Cage's uh, Centenary. Okay. And and Cage was kind of the reason that I, that I was gravitating toward, towards Finnegan's Wake anyway, because he had done a lot of work involving the wake in, in different ways and was a good evangelist for anything he got excited about it. He would write about it and he would talk about it and he would talk about how great Finnegan's Wake is or <laughs> Buckminster Fuller or Norman O'Brown or, or whoever it was. Or whatever it was that he was excited about, John Cage would would let you know, and you know you have to do this. So, so that was how I got hooked, and that was how I got hooked back in again because I ended up doing a number of putting together a number of performances that ended up involving Finnegan's Wake one way or, or the other, mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of gave me the appetite and. So by the end of that, uh, the Cage Centennial year, which was 2012, um, and, and here's what, here's, there are multiple coincidences that come up here. It's a, at the end of January, and I've just performed one more of these, these uh, Cage Joyce connected things. Wow. And I started to think, so what if I were actually going to learn the whole thing? How would that work out? You know, how would I? And so this time, instead of just moving forward, you know, I'm saying I'm going to make a plan for it and just see if it's doable. So I figure out, okay, this is how much, you know, I can digest. This is how much I could learn in a month. But let's say, um, you know, I want to I want to keep pace with it and I don't want to burn out. So let's see it say, I'll do three weeks out of one month, four, four weeks out of the next month, you know, and have places where there are built-in breaks. Um, and I will be learning about a page for this thing. Uh, so mm -hmm. crunch, 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 crunch all the numbers and, um, and, and figured out that, okay, so if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to learn the book, it's going to take 17 years. And I, I stop and I go, wait, wait, that's, exactly how long it took Joyce to write it. No way. Right? Oh yeah. my yeah, gosh. It was, uh, 20, 20, I mean, started in 23. Uh, it was published uh, in 39. Uh, you know, so so I knew this number 17, you know, and, and here it comes. And that wasn't, I wasn't trying to go for 17. Mm -hmm. I was just, you know, portioning the thing out and say, this is, if I'm going to do it, and if I'm not going to burn out, this is the pace I would have to take. And it turns out, oh, that's going to take 17 years. And what are the chances? And then, I, you know, it's so hairs go up on the back of the neck. And I think, oh, okay, well, I guess I have to do it then. <laughs> yeah, that's and, fine. And then the other other thing that I wasn't that I wasn't thinking about, you know, is the next day I resolved that I'm going to, okay, I'm starting. I started on that, and so I started on that day. And what I didn't think about until like a couple of weeks in, I looked, I looked back, and I thought, "Wait, I started this thing on February 2nd. I started really? it on his birthday." <laughs> oh my god! Thought, how did that? How did that work? Oh you know, my god! Because goodness. because it was just it was really just it was just started. You know, I had just done this. Uh, a uh, cage performance, mm -hmm. you know, and the next day I think, hmm, maybe I want to learn it. Well, what would it be involved? Well, I'll do it. Th 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 th. Oh, 17 years. I got to do it. I'm starting tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow was, uh, tomorrow was February 2nd. And, oh my gosh. And, and so, so it felt like, you know, it was kind of, you know, that there were, there were, there were like blessings or validations or. <laughs> yes. Yeah, signs for the universe. Um, and and so so yeah, February second, twenty thirteen. I started work on it. I think I, you know, I uh, 
Um, and then, and then at the end, and I had also part of the calculation was, okay, so I'm going to take the first year to kind of relearn chapter one, but then I actually want to really have it really be able to prepare it once I know it. So I say, we'll, we'll give to give it two years. Mm -hmm. And so I'll do the, I'll start. So I started the project at the beginning of 2013. Uh, first performance was the end of 2014. Okay. And, uh, and then since then I have stayed on track and I've been able to do, do a new, to, to, to you know, just to get out a, a new chapter, um, like second or third week of, December each year since then and wow. so so which was eight chapters as of this last December and oh my goodness and I I you know and I don't know if you would have asked me to like bet money on it <laughs> you know in 20 in 2013 you know yeah. do you think that in 2022 you will have you know look back and say well yep did it <laughs> still making it through it it. wow <laughs> oh my goodness i love how it started with like the readings with you and your friends that's something that um i found actually a lot of the people that i talked to is mm -hmm. like the way that they got get got into joyce or even like their favorite things about yeah. joyce now are like those social events where we're just like right. nerding out with people. I don't know. So well, you know, with me, I mean, let's let, let's clarify. I'm I'm kind of the the weirdo in, in, in that <laughs> term because everybody everybody does. I mean, you have Ulysses reading groups and round robin things yes. and and yeah. fitting his wake people get together and kind of pick apart the text. But I'm I'm really such an in, in introvert and a lone wolf that my way of doing it is has been very solitary and when i do it in public i mean when i say we invite friends over that's kind of inviting friends over for me to perform it mm -hmm. um so it's um and i i always look around and see it's and i notice that what i'm doing is it's it's different and and it reflects <laughs> Kind of who am I am? I'm a performer, and I want to be in, and I want to be in control of how things are doing. And I definitely want to. I definitely want to give it. I mean, I, it's not mm -hmm. that I just do it all by myself. You know, I have a very strong need to present it, mm -hmm. also. Okay. But I do. I do notice that by <laughs> by in terms of the other choice he knows, I feel like I'm more antisocial than most that way. I mean, only only antisocial in that I would rather work on it, do the work on my own, mm -hmm. and and pick it pick it apart on my own, and certainly look at, you know, have conversations from time to time, and look at what other people have written and everything. You know, I'm not just eschewing yeah. all of that, but but I'm kind of weirdly weirdly monkish, I think, about the way that I deal with Joyce, more more so than then what I see is is the rule or the way people generally engage it. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I feel like it takes a certain like, I don't know, like monastic mindset to memorize things like that at all. <laughs> it's very interesting. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, okay, so you mentioned that you do like to have conversations with people. And I think one of sure. the things that I'm sure. like hoping to ask everybody in my project is like, what is the most interesting conversation you've had about Joyce? Whether that's like about him or like something somebody's asked you about memorizing Finnegan's Wake. Or oh, there there have been so many, mm -hmm. um, and I, and certainly a lot of them have been with uh, with my wife, who is is I don't think this project would have advanced to this point if not for her and that also goes back to uh she was Finnegan's Wake was one new thing in 19 1984 and Anna was another I mean we we met um at just a, a rooming house in the university district in, in Seattle mm -hmm. and things came together really quickly and and we had moved into our first place by the fall of that year and that was just when i was starting to uh 
to you know open open up the way can oh what's this hundred letter word okay i have to learn it and so <laughs> and so one day right around this i say oh listen you should listen to this you should listen to this and um and i and so i started doing this and she was just enchanted um which which i don't know if you can count on that I mean, I don't know if you can count on that, that this is, okay, that this is, this is the woman I've ended up with, but it also turns out that she is absolutely, has been consistently delighted and enchanted with, with Finnegan's Way from the, from the ah. beginning. And she's not, she's not much of an avant-gardist. Okay. <laughs> other than Finnegan's Wake. I mean, she is, uh, I mean, she would kind of come along to the, to the cage performances and the free improv stuff and the various things but it really wasn't her cup of tea and she is yeah you know and every once in a while i mean there's something something that comes up where she she connects with it but she's more more on the outside with most of the experimental avant-garde stuff that mm -hmm. that i've been doing but but finnegan's wake it is not i mean she's definitely not you know, just an, an encouraging good wife about it. She's She has been way into it wow. from the beginning and absolutely delighted with the sound of it, which means that uh, for one thing, I mean, I can rehearse in the house <laughs> and, you know, and not get told to, can you shut up for, you know, can you, can you just not do that for one? Uh, no, she's, she's in but she's she's always ready i say 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 can i run can i run you know a, a, the first quarter of part two chapter one are you ready and she's there you know she's oh amazing she's um so so our our life has been you know many 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 conversations about james joyce um and we we've read we've read ulysses out loud together so here's here's things you know we <laughs> actually doing doing wow. something i mean that she had that uh with so we got through it once and we were actually during uh lockdown we were mm -hmm. reading it again and got and got and i think things kind of opened uh, started to open up and i had to go back to work about uh, about the time we were getting into Circe, into into that epi no, episode. The best one. So, so we got so anyway, that's been that's been kind of on the sidelines, but but we're definitely talking about that we have to find a way to go back go back and actually finish the book. <laughs> I'm sure you will. I find it so I've run into a lot of people who like literally COVID-19 hit and everyone was like, we need to read Ulysses. <laughs> Yep. And I know, like, even I had, like, that was literally my first start, or, like, my first thought after lockdown. I just, like, got a Ulysses reading group together, forced all my friends to do it. I don't yeah. know if they were as pleased as your wife seems to be, but <laughs> the, they made it through for me anyway, which I appreciated. Good, but, good for them. But, yeah, there's, there's something about it that just really lended, or lent itself to, well, the world's confusing, so we might as well just let Joyce confuse us more. In this yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's so exciting that all of us share that. <laughs> I mean, that does what you're what you're saying there. That does remind me. Um, it was a it was a comment that John Cage uh, made about someone who was asking, "Why is your music so disor disorganized and noisy and and messy and what whatever and and he says that well maybe if you listen to this and you go out and and when you go outside maybe maybe the world won't seem as as much of a mess as it as it normally does maybe it won't be as maybe life will be less frustrating because you <laughs> because you got this dose of and, and i think and i i feel like um joyce in general is is like that i feel like he's um, he must have been been the pioneer in putting out, you know, ambiguous, obscure elements in his stories, which which are really there from the beginning, from the Dubliners' mm -hmm. stories. Um, that that he he just kind of lays these things out and doesn't explain, 
and yes. and you and you experience them and i feel like his answer and he may have said something well isn't isn't life like that i mean if you're if you're mm-hmm. going out and walking down the street i mean don't you hear some sound that you're not sure where where it came from uh mm-hmm. and you don't know where i mean look at all the people that are around where are they all going we don't know you know i mean I walk. I walk by this guy, and then I never see him again. You know, and and that's, um, uh, uh, you know, I walk. I walk into a store, and there, are, everybody is talking. You know, and it's, uh, and if you try to pay attention, and you try to hear everything that is is being said, mm-hmm. you know, you would, you know, you would overload, overload, <laughs> you know, or just, or just enjoy the, uh, just enjoy the the chaos of it, mm-hmm. and. And that's what I feel Joyce kind of teaches us to, instead of that his his books are more like life than than what what previous writers had done, where, you know, writers are trying to bring out, okay, this is the narrative, this is the character, this is what they're doing, and we'll make sure you understand what's what's going on and we'll make sure that every and i'm i i the author i'm here to make sure that everything ends tidily mm-hmm. you know whether maybe tragically maybe comically but you'll know what happened um and james joyce comes along and says so why why does that have to be the rule why does why does uh comprehension understanding tidiness why does that have to be the rule? Because that's not, it's certainly not the rules that life lives by or that the world lives by and shouldn't, um, shouldn't literature resemble life? Shouldn't it, shouldn't it hold up the mirror, you know, in, in Shakespeare's mm-hmm. term? And if you're gonna do that, then you're gonna do something that is much more complex mm-hmm. and um, obscure than, than what has come before and definitely yeah wow yeah that makes me I don't know I hadn't thought of it I used to think I think of like Joyce's work as sort of this like linear of just getting like more and more abstract as you go (laughs) so you kind of like you know manage in Dublin you know Dubliners is the nice easy in where like sure not a lot of I don't think I don't think Dublin for me is not easy at all I no. Mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, there I, is, there are stories that I, you know, I'm not, I think I kind of know what happened, but, but it's mm-hmm. not, it's not completely clear. Okay. Do you think that that has like, just because of like the relationship that you have with Finnegan's Wake, do you think that you like see more of that, like abstractness or like lack, or you know what I mean? Like disinterest and comprehension in some of his earlier work? Like is that um well I guess the tough thing I mean I think the toughest thing about Dubliners mm-hmm. is its severity. I mean that okay. it's I mean it's um and that changes. I think Dubliners be, by the time you get to the last uh I'm trying to think the last three or four stories. I mean there's mm-hmm. uh, I mean those which are, are my favorite parts of the book. I mean, the Ivy Day in the committee room, Grace, um, a mother, and of course the dead. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it, it's like the earlier parts of the story, I mean, feel very severe, uh, diagnostic. I mean, that there's that opening line about, you know, I wanted to know paralysis and understand it's it's mm-hmm. deadly work i'm not getting the quote exactly right but the line no. is and there and there is this kind of clinical thing okay. going through there and and the book is and is not kind to its characters and it's not very forgiving of either of either dublin or or the people in there i mean and this is mm-hmm. and that already and that's and and that for me is maybe um i feel like that's a big part of joyce's journey is is moving from moving from that severity and that judgment to 
something that is much more open-hearted you know and the yes the yes at the end at the end of ulysses mm -hmm. um and 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 the here comes everybody of, of finnegan's wake i mean the i mean it's he begins like this and <laughs> and by the end he's like that um and you know and i think that's and that's one of the the sad things for me about finnegan's wake is how little it was appreciated or embraced in it in its time because i feel that joyce is you know open opening his arms to to all of us you know and say you know lots of lots of fun at finnegan's wake right <laughs> um, and you know and people were people at the time were so perplexed mm -hmm. by the book and 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 to some extent that's still true but i feel that from what i see certainly you know going to joyce symposium which is you know which is kind of a hothouse environment <laughs> for people i mean there there are running you run into so many people who who really love the book Okay. And who you know, and who turned to it as a as as a source of fun. I mean, it's it's such a such a funny funny book. Um, you know, and I hope it's it's something that you know. This is where you know when you talk about people looking down from heaven or seeing something. I mean, that this is something where I wish Joyce could see that. I feel like slowly, but but surely. I mean, that book has found its audience, and Ulysses too, of course. Oh, I mean, yes. I mean, it's it is kind of preceding it. Um, it's. Uh, I mean, they both they both still daunt and puzzle <laughs> and challenge a lot of us, but mm -hmm. but I but but it feels like it's you know a hundred years a hundred years down the road i mean they they haven't just been forgotten you know or, mm -hmm. or or dismissed you know and that's yeah i it's interesting like how many people i've talked to as well sort of like how that dauntingness has like become a part of it where mm -hmm. i i feel like a lot of other books that have that like daunting i know like i my ulysses book club actually went on to essentially just become like an impossible to read book club and like mm -hmm. a lot of the other books that we you know like we've read david foster wallace's infinite jest and like tolstoy's war and peace mm -hmm. those things like we approach them like very trepidatiously and once you get into them you realize you know that it's just a reputation and they're just books but you know like yeah. that that initial like fear of it was so much whereas like with Ulysses it was almost part of the fun of like how afraid we were of it you know yeah yeah, yeah it's been it's yeah it's a very different experience I don't know and do you, this is a random question just popped into my mind but a lot of people that I've talked to have mentioned like reading in like book clubs and that sort of thing but i found like i i mean i have read ulysses since in book clubs but the first time i read it was like all alone it was like well me and don gifford i suppose mm -hmm. but you know and it seems yeah. like you're kind of in that same sense too of like yeah being with the text at first like sort of like alone in your room figuring out like what it is but do you have any like experience in book clubs or like you know how does it come how does your reading experience, I guess, like compare to that general like um, tone of, you know, rejoicing well, groups? Well, it's I, I mean, I had to correct it because I realized that 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 my wife and I, I mean, share this love of of mm -hmm. Joyce, you know, and we've gone been through Ulysses almost almost twice now and hopefully <laughs> we'll complete the second turn through before mm -hmm. too long, uh, you know, and she and she sits and listens to me rehearse uh the wake you know she's listened to so much of that and we and we we talk about that and and um so it's not i'm not really as monastic as as i i let on to begin with which is a good point but then uh 
the but then the other thing and the the more recent development is is that I've been to um, the Joyce symposiums uh, in Antwerp in 2018 and then in Mexico City in 2019, okay. and uh, finding that community is um, has has been a, a delight. Okay, um, it's Joyceans are a lot of fun to to hang out with. Um, and yeah, there have been so many conversations, you know, and and friendships that have come up. I mean, John Lavin, whom that I when I met in Antwerp, and then um, who ended up after hearing me perform again in Mexico City, that he came back with this. Why don't we do something? we should do something about Joyce and jazz. What do you say? And so I say, you know, that came completely out of left field. I thought, yeah, sure, why not? Um, uh, uh, and so there's, so I, yeah, I guess Joyce in community. I mean, I can't, I mean, I, the only reading group I've been involved is just me and my wife reading this. Or I think there was some party once where we, got together and read we we talked about getting back together and just doing a Circe just in a really book oh. and that never never quite happened but i hope it will someday <laughs> hopefully um, that'd be cool <laughs> but what but what i love um seeing in groups is seeing um how many different approaches people come up with as far as what they're going to do with Joyce. Okay. Um, and, and the first one was, I mean, I'll, that that my my experience is that that I come across Finnegan's Wake and my thought is, wow, this is a piece of music. I need to learn it. Um, and one other big uh, push and incentive I had to actually do that was another thing I did prior to all that, you know, figuring out how long it was going to take and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, I went on YouTube and Googled, and I thought there must be somebody, there must be other people who are learning this, you know, because, you know, my thought is such a, it's such an obvious thing that wow. it's, that it is, that this is so, this book is so centered in sound mm -hmm. um, that there there are parts not just the thunderclaps but other things that you have to learn to hear correctly okay so if it's sound and if it's something you would have to learn and practice people must be out there learning and practicing it and i don't uh no that's not <laughs> happening i mean there was there was all i was found, found were these scattered things of some person here who had learned the first four pages and some person here who had uh learned a page and a half and somebody else who had done this and oh there's this one guy uh adam harvey who learned uh part one chapter seven and performed it quite a bit um but but there was nobody who was trying to to learn learn the whole thing you know or no group of bodies who were saying okay this is music we need to learn it you learn chapter one i i mean i was expecting i would find something like that wow. and i was expecting i would find uh, naively expecting i would find a lot of it because for me it's so much fun to i mean both to learn and perform i mean this is the kind of the secret of it is that that i would absolutely not be able to do this if it wasn't really really fun um wow. so that was so here's here's a case in point that you know, I look at Finnegan's Wake and I say, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn this and perform it." Mm -hmm. um, Peter O'Brien in Toronto, I mean, takes the takes pages from the book, and he's and and you've seen people's copies of Finnegan's Wake that are marked up all over the place. Peter will take a page and he turns his uh, marginal notes into artwork. So these are these are his pages, and what you can see, it's um, wow. you can't really see it cl as clearly, but the actual text is there, and then all the stuff in color 
are his notes that he's he's made about it. Oh my goodness. Um so and and this is not something I'm not that much of a vision and, and here's the the mooks and the gripes <laughs> yes, <please. laughs> oh wow oh my goodness i had no idea about this it's amazing yeah. and then carol wade who is um see these are hers she has i mean I, this is kind of something that um parallels what I'm doing is is that she has the intent to illustrate each page. What? Oh my goodness. Um wow. Oh my goodness. Some, and some of them she's actually, you know, using a lot of the text in there also. Um So do you do any like collabs with these two? I don't know like what that would look like, but you know, like um, showing like well, the yeah, page of I, art I, while you're reading or reciting it. Uh, I I had, there was one guy who is local that I was reaching out to and I, and it's, um, it's kind of difficult because like, like uh, Peter, Peter and I were actually talking about something that we were gonna propose you know, I, I just before lockdown, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 there was going to be something that he was going to have uh, a number of his his works up there, and he was going to like reproduce a huge um, like mural mural size uh, edition of the text, and allow like participants to. Um, to to draw and paint on it themselves, wow. and then I would be reciting the the chapter, and we were and we were again looking at chapter eight. I mean that's as something something like that, and when, mm -hmm. and so that uh, you know twenty twenty kind of threw a monkey wrench, and <laughs> yeah, all, all sorts of things as we all know. Worship of the wake. I mean there is uh, um, this reminds me of. Joseph Campbell's, one of Joseph Campbell's favorite lines from uh, one of the Grail romances is mm -hmm. that uh, as the Knights of the Round Table are, uh, you know, are, you know, given the quest of the Grail, mm -hmm. uh, this needs to be found to restore the kingdom. And, and there is this line in this French Grail romance that each of them entered the forest where he found it thickest. Uh, so I mean, it's, so that's that's such a beautiful line, and there's so much to unpack in it, mm -hmm. um, and 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 it speaks so much to what vocation is, um, and I, and I think that there is, I mean, this was. Um, you know, 13th century Cistercian Trappist um, writer. Mm -hmm. You know, and so is so, uh, and so there's a very stern sense of how one, how does one go after the Grail? How does one go after the thing where life is? Well, you have to find the hardest spot and the hardest, thorniest, thickest part of the forest for you. I mean, this is this is where each. They each night entered where he found it thickest. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if we wanted to, for Joyce in Finnegan's Wake particularly, the coincidence of the opposites is always the greatest truth is when you take the opposites and uh, and bring them together, let them, let them collide. And so it's the forest, the place for the forest where they found it thickest, but also the part that part of the forest that spoke to their hearts. 
you know, this, this is, and, and I guess for me, I mean, learning Finnegan's Wake, I mean, this, this is, you know, I had to come to terms and it took uh, decades for me wow. to get to the point. I mean, just, just remember that I'm talking about, you know, having this idea when I'm 25 um, and kind of starting on it and kind of throwing up my hands at a certain point, because I was definitely, there was this thought that, oh, this is too much. I mean, I, I can't continue. Um, and, and then when I'm 54, coming back and looking at it and saying, I want to do this. And I feel like I have to do it because nobody else is doing it. And, you know, because here's, here's the other thing. This is kind of, you know, picking up, up, up the thread. And I, what, nobody's doing it. It wasn't just that. I mean, there was a sense of, okay, now I really have to do it. I, I mean, I wow. have to do it because this has to be done. Um, for me, it was this feeling like if this doesn't happen, then that's, it's bad. It's, it, it's that there is something that all of it, it it's, it's bad in the sense of imagine the alternative universe where Beethoven wrote this body of string quartets mm -hmm. and it hadn't occurred to anybody to actually learn them and play them. I mean, that people would sit around, you know, and baby, basically, you know, a very few people, you know, would, mm -hmm. would open, you know, a, a Beethoven string quartet, you know, and try, you know, and just beat their head against this. What is, what would this sound like? What does this sound like? You know, and, and a few people who were up for that, really difficult task would take it would take it on you know and maybe there would be reading groups where people would get around and they would try to sing it you know or try to you know what is what this is this is such so amazing but it's so cryptic um as opposed to the world we fortunately do live in where you can go hear a good quartet play the gross of fuga and you know, and it just knocks you out, and you don't, and you don't think about you know how hard this must be to to take off the take off the page. Um, and so for me, this was exactly the thought when I'm seeing Finnegan's Wake is like I, I'm living in this weird world where nobody figures out that this thing has to be heard, and in order for it to be heard, it has to be learned well, um, and it not only has to be learned well, but um, but you have to attend to the composer's indications, the hints he gives you about how this should sound. Um, and and I find that I I, it, I mean this was coming up at the at the panel mm -hmm. that it always surprises me about how um, blindsided and kind of shocked in a good way people were be will be about the way that i do the wake mm -hmm. but um the but the counter example that i'll have is that there's a very good uh complete recording of finnegan's way because as, as an audiobook that was just put on that that people okay. rightfully love i mean let me state right out that uh you know to give context to what i'm going to say next <laughs> uh, is is that is that it's a good recording it's a good audiobook recording but the point of an audiobook as i understand it is to um it's to to give a, a kind of a neutral reading of mm -hmm. it so people can hear it but you don't want to really impose you know some eccentric your eccentric vision of something on somebody who basically wants to read the book, but they're basically out in their car or walking around and they don't have time. I mean, that's kind of what audiobooks are for. Mm -hmm. um, so we're getting back to that thunderclap on uh, on page one. And Barry McGovern, who's who's a fantastic reader, he's going around and he gets to the thunderclap and he goes and he gets to the fall. Ba 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 dalga rock taka minna ron kan bran tanda ron tu wan tan pro va ho non spon tu hu hu den den thor nuk, which is, you know, like, like chanting it or something. Mm -hmm. But that's not a thunderclap. This is 
this is um I mean, remember the the cat the cat noises in in was, Ulysses was, yeah. that we were talking about. Muck and mow, muck and, mow. And, and this is that word should be thunder. It's intended to sound like thunder. Mm -hmm. And ba ba da ga ra which I I feel like I've heard other people do it when Cage gets to it in his reading through that he does kind of the same thing, and it's like really all you can do if you're just encountering it as a reader, the only way you're gonna get all of it in and not just trip yourself up mm -hmm. is, is to do it that way. So I concede that point, but it's thunder. It, it, and it should sound like thunder. And if you actually learn it, you know, and when I read it, it's the fall. And that's, but but you can't you can't just read it up there off the page, like that. You For have sure. to you have, you have to learn it like like a little piece of music like that, you know. And I and to get it, I have to. Bob, there's those three B. Bob, Bob, Bob. So I figure that's like a little. It's starting low and it's a crescendo. Bob, 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 you know. And there's the first crack of it, you know. And it's and it gets back to people think of what cats say and they think they say meow and they think of what thunder does and they and they and people just i mean what's kaboom crack you know the yeah, coming yeah. sound effects you know what what's the sound thunder makes <laughs> you know that's it but but listen but if you're in a thunderstorm i mean listen i mean and joyce gets it i mean because joyce actually listens and joyce we know listen close to thunder because he was terrified of thunder he was mm. terrified of thunderstorms wow. um and so he has so he knows what it sounds like you know and he has 10 different of these things and none of them are kaboom it's um, and also to do that, I mean, you have to, you have to breathe, you have to breathe like a singer because okay. you can't get through that word in one, in one breath, unless you, unless you very intentionally, you know, Mm -hmm. in, inhale big time before you do it. Otherwise, you're not going to get to the last <laughs> syllable. <before you> <gasps> so, um, so this gets back to, and I have, and there are so many moments in this mm -hmm. where I'm getting that, you know, and so, <laughs> and so, I mean, and so it's, so my reward for this one of my main rewards and and it's and it does still surprise me is when people are just blindsided by you know all these all these different sounds mm -hmm. um you know what was it fiona bolger said how do you do that with just, <laughs> just one now? <laughs> that that cracked me up okay. that cracked me up for sure um <laughs> and but so in so what I like about when I'm I'm performing some of some of the book at a panel like that is mm -hmm. I feel like okay it was it was and is important to do this because it really is opening up the book to you know to mm -hmm. you know and gives gives people a new way to think about it the next time they see it on the page. You know, it's what what are what are the what are the sounds are there? What noise actually getting at? Uh, and and certain in Finnegan's Wake, I think more more so than in Ulysses. But even in Ulysses, mm -hmm. I mean, he's thinking about the sound of what's what's happening, and so it should. I would say that it's it's a mistake to try to read it in a, in a detached way or if you try to read it in, in a detached way i feel like you're gonna gonna miss most most of what he's trying to present 
most of what he wants you to experience. I mean, that there's, there's no room for neutrality. I like that, that idea of like, you can't have neutrality and you can't pretend that it's just like words on the page that, you know, exist there and we can take meaning from them or whatever. It's such a, like, it's such an interesting gray area to me because like, mm-hmm. like you're studying, it's rigorous. It's like mind blowing. But at the same time, like, I don't think that any like, scholarly study you know what I mean of like you couldn't write a thesis about this because the whole point is that it's you know not on the page the the project I feel like the project is my thesis wow okay it's like when when I take it out I feel Mm -hmm. like um that That it, it's it felt so good. This is up for me because um, I had to. Uh, I had like uh, the better part of two years. I couldn't do it in public. You know, I was, mm-hmm. I was thankfully. You know, I discovered Facebook Live and Zoom and things like that, and so I, I stuck with it, and I did. I did. Um, I was planning to do seven chapters last year, and I, I I was planning to do eight chapters, and I only managed seven because one of the big insights last year is, at least at this point, eight chapters is too much, and I just I just broke down wow. um, a few uh, um, a few weeks before I was going to reprise chapter seven. I had done chapter seven and a, and a good performance of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the year the the year before um but i just i just ran out of gas and i said well i gotta cancel chapter seven because i don't want to have to cancel chapter eight Mm -hmm. Um, but for chapter eight i was able to do it in in public again okay exactly And, and that was and that was a delight. And because of the time off, I was really able to experience um, what it was like to be in that space mm-hmm. and with people. My venue each December when I do the new chapter is uh, called the Chapel Performance Space okay. um, in Seattle, which is a, a room in uh, the the Good Shepherd Center in the in the Wallingford neighborhood of Seattle. The center center of the Good Shepherd was uh, was formerly a, a Catholic home for wayward girls. It okay. was built in 1903, okay. um, and the room where we perform actually was the the chapel where they would they would have services and it and it's this very distinctive room really high ceiling and these kind of church like arches and acoustics that are um they suggest a cathedral i mean there's there's a, a lot of reverb in there but it's not it's not like that wet and it's not not that overwhelming um and since i guess for the last 10 or 15 years it's been a dedicated uh new music space um it's a it's a real boon to the you know to the avant-garde music community around here because it's an incredible place to play and it's really and it's not and it doesn't break the bank to, to, to book it either um so I was back there and I set it up and basically kind of a sense of when I performed Finnegan's Wake, it was really important for me to not try to act it out, uh, okay. largely because there, because there's so much implied in every movement and to try to pick um, what's the narrative thread or wh- who are the characters or whatever was, was more than I wanted to deal with. Just learning the text was a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, towards that end, one thing I do is I perform it in the dark. I mean, Joyce has said it's a it's a it's a book in the dark, and so you're feeling your way around. And that was one way that he explained the obscurity of it. So I perform it in the dark. 
but but in the dark there is be, before the lights go down i have a beautiful you know if finnegan's wake were a medieval manuscript i had an incredible technical theater person who put together this thing it looks like this old uh medieval book with illuminated letters and everything that i i set up everywhere um i have um a table on the other side of the stage that is is going to ha has a pitcher of water and for the for the, the and, a, and a bottle of wine and and so i began so it b basically is done it's more like a like a church service or a mass than than anything else you know that i come in in the dark and with a flashlight i pour water in a glass and then wine and three glasses over here and and some of this is is practical because these chapters are long so i have to <laughs> something um and and then there's this this movement um i'm wearing this this vestment that my sister made made for me of this very sparkly material um with the idea that in the dark well, this is the coincidence of opposites that there should be this sparkly scintillating kind of thing that you can kind of sort of see okay you know, either either in the dark or when the flashlight goes on or 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 whatever so so it's very so it's all very carefully set up like this and then there's this incredible acoustics which we kind of goose the reverberation a little bit by miking the grand piano that they that they have up the front so that kind of adds some shimmer mm -hmm. it's kind of like an audio oral scintillation that kind of matches the the priestly vestment um and anyway it was good to be back i mean i i definitely enjoyed the very bare bones um uh live streams that i did mm -hmm. i mean where i did it where i really had to rethink a lot of it because all of a sudden you know i go from this liturgical pageantry to you know being a talking head on a screen and, and it had to be it was more than just a, a simplification it was like a, a rethinking of, of how i I presented, but it was good. At, but the whole point, I go around and around around this. It was good to be back mm -hmm. among people and in a space that had a feel and a vibe, and um, it was good. <laughs> yes, oh, it sounds fantastic. I don't know. I've only ever like seen the Facebook live stream, so I didn't like have yeah. the full aura of it all. Yeah, oh, the live gosh. performance is is different. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's uh, that's one of the fun things about the wake, or I think it also has to do with just having this text in memory, is mm -hmm. that is that there are so many different ways it can be presented once once you have it. I mean, there's another um, much smaller space um, where I where I can I, where I can only book like one show a year. For the for the chapel mm -hmm. um so when i was doing other chapters when i when i do other chapters i do them mm -hmm. at uh, a gallery in the mm -hmm. in the capitol hill neighborhood that is um interestingly also used to be a church i mean it was a it was a black church in the wow. in the in the central district um and that and that is like this chamber performance of this this other thing that's more like a high church operatic kind of a thing to this more chamber music version uh where i also do it in the dark and there's also a piano that i block it but we don't we don't actually use sound reinforcement in that space because it's mm -hmm. not necessary um and and then there's the um when i did it in um in mexico city i remember i mean it's it's like there's interesting there's always curveballs being thrown and and i said so so i'm writing them and say so i prefer to perform this in the dark so i hope we can do it that way and they say well 
that's not really possible because because there's this huge arch art deco um uh glass window behind you in the in the room where you're you're presenting so that i think it won't be dark but i think you'll like it <laughs> and that was that was really great too and and there were some incredible moments in that performance where i'm my, there was some moments where just the the sun broke through the clouds except you couldn't really see it because it's mm -hmm. like this um i don't know what you call it, it wasn't stained glass but okay. it was it was it was not transparent but only translucent okay. and all of a sudden there was they said there was like this big light behind <sighs> it so, wow. so um so there is <laughs> it's it's just that that you never know quite what you're what you're going to get or you you know you book a performance and then then you have to have to kind of deal with the space you have mm -hmm. and i've kind of you know just by necessity you know resigned myself to well i don't have control of this but <laughs> but that doesn't have to be a bad thing no it sounds like it's turned out really well yeah wow that's so i'm interested in like how many of your spaces have been like old like sacred spaces and even like the terms that you're using about like like liturgy and we've used monastic and like vocation all of that stuff i found it really i like to me i've always felt that like how could i not with joyce you know that sort of like religious connection but i'm surprised how many people that i've talked to for this project like it's my it's like my one like thread that I found, you know what I mean? That like people keep bringing up. And I was, I don't know, like I know that it's like part of the content of Joyce's book, but I didn't realize that his like, the reading of it has such like this aura, you know what I mean? I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've ever like encountered that with other groups or anything like that, but. Well, it's, um, I mean, Joyce was, I mean, he was as educated by the Jesuits mm -hmm. and um, despite the fact that he was not, you know, he, he refused to baptize his children. Um, he, you know, definitely, you know, stood back, you know, and, and made no secret about the fact that he was, you know, he was not a practicing mm -hmm. Christian catholic mm -hmm. but he also uh this and this was this was something that surprised me when i was uh rereading elman's bi biography recently and then there was um a, a friend on facebook actually filled this in with some detail is that joyce uh every year he would get up early in the morning and go to the good friday services and really? he said that this was the the greatest uh and he thought like the the good good friday um mass was was he said he thought this is this is the pinnacle of western uh art and drama um wow. you know and he and he was not i think that and this is you know it's not just that he wasn't a christian i mean i'm almost more impressed by the fact that if you read his biography joyce is not a morning person he is you know he is not somebody that you could get out of bed early for any reason and but but for for good friday i mean he was always up and out and he would kind of sit off to one side where he wouldn't be recognized um and, wow. and that's so i'm so excited i'm like 150 pages into elvin's biography right now so now i'm very excited to get to that part and see what it's all about i think that there's something to that idea of like the the mass or like specifically the good friday mass but i think earlier in elman's biography he talks about just sort of like the mass as a whole is this like very like theatrical thing like yeah there yeah, are set yeah. there are set words and people say that like we're acting it out a bit <laughs> but uh, I don't know. And then we, you know, <laughs> we come to like old sacred spaces and then perform Joyce's work. It's a personal thing for me, and it's not something that's um, conscious, but mm -hmm. I remember a teacher of, of mine pointed it out mm -hmm. to me long ago. My dad, my dad is a is a Presbyterian minister. Mm 
Okay. Um, and so I always saw him, you know, in, in his robes. I mean, delivering sermons and, and leading the service. You know, it wasn't mass. I mean, it was definitely Protestant stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, my teacher, Stuart Dempster, was at a performance that I did and says, this is, this is like, like your dad isn't it? And I, wow. and I, kind of go, I go, yeah, it is. And that was a different project, but it's like, I keep coming back to these projects that have no particular religious content, mm -hmm. but, but it's like, I, I just have, and I'm just drawn toward, um, framing things that end up feeling pretty liturgical. Um, you know, and then then there are these these happy accidents, like like the fact that the main that that the best place to perform uh, experimental music in Seattle happens to be the old <laughs> chapel. Um, you know, and I feel and I feel right at home. You know, it's <laughs> it, it's. It, you know, and I have to acknowledge, I mean, that this is not something I have to c control over and I don't do it on purpose. And mm -hmm. when I was setting up Finnegan's Wake, I wasn't necessarily thinking that much. I was thinking about what I didn't want to do. I was thinking I didn't want to act it out.